Chip in Pasadena. Glad to have you along in our College Game Day Bowl Selection Special presented by Outback. I'm Reese Davis along with my buddies Lou Holtz and Mark May. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet join us in just a little bit. And Lou, we're going to hear a lot during this bowl season. The game will be determined by who shows up ready to play. That always doesn't have everything to do with schemes and X's and O's. Oh, you're absolutely right. There's so many things going to determine it. First of all, you start off, when do your exams end? How much practice time do you have? Then once you get there, how much spending money do your players have in comparison with the other team? Because they're going to get together and they're going to compare. What kind of gifts did they get? Do they have too much free time? Do you put a curfew on them? Or do they have too little free time they're going to get upset? But probably most important, do they look on the bowl game as a reward saying, hey, you shouldn't work me that hard, let me enjoy myself? Or do they look on it as an opportunity to improve their standing in the top 25? And are they fresh? Uh, as a former player, it would be reward, first and <laughs> foremost, because it's all about the swag. That's what it is. Because when I played, we got T-shirts, hats, we even got music, but... They were eight track tapes when I played. <laughs> now the kids are getting Xboxes, iPods, DVD players. It's almost like Christmas, Christmas at the Davis household. Yeah, be careful, be careful though about getting that extra spending money, right? Well, very, you get very, very, huh? I know, I know, I'm kidding. Uh, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, they watched USC finish off their perfect regular season going for the unprecedented in the major poll era three-peat in the Rose Bowl against Texas. They're still enjoying the California sun in LA, Chris. <laughs> Reese, thank you. All quiet here yeah. at the Coliseum, but only 31 days until pandemonium in Pasadena. It is a BCS dream matchup, proving that even an ill-conceived, poorly designed, and deeply flawed machine can occasionally <laughs> function properly. Lee, your turn. All right, not so fast, my friend. The BCS worked. It gave us exactly what they promised. One versus two and no controversy. <laughs> You're seriously going to say that year, again? That All right, right it's okay. four the last four times out of eight I, I they've got it's 50 percent. All right, this year it works. I just think the, the game. We said this last year, and it didn't turn out to be the case. But the hype for this game. Yeah. Texas at number two all year, USC at number one all year is probably going to be the most hyped up and most anticipated national championship that we have seen. And I think this one's going to live up to it. Yep. Well, we said that last year and it didn't live up to it. Well, this year I, I think will. this will be the least controversial, least controversial BCS season. But I, I hate to agree with the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee. Let's fix this thing. I know, we, I know it's going to look good on January that. 4th. Yeah, Let's fix hard. it. Respect to you. That's All, right. Right. That's nice All right, Chris, that pitch got a little bit wide. You know they can't fix it. It can't be fixed until they do a playoff. That is another topic for another day. What is a topic for this day? Capital One Bowl. Thought by many to be the most prestigious bowl outside of those BCS games. And Barry Alvarez, his swan song, coming up against Auburn January 2nd, 1 Eastern on ABC. And for the second time in four years, Iowa and Florida in the Outback Bowl. This should be a pretty good matchup. I like this matchup. Kurt Ferentz again bringing his team to a bowl. I still think Kurt Ferentz is one of the best coaches in the nation. Miami had hoped to perhaps play for the national championship or at least get into the BCS, but the Hurricanes derailed late in the season by Georgia Tech, missed out on the ACC title game. So the Canes coming off a solid season, but not a conference championship season, awaiting their bowl fate, and the reigning Peach Bowl champions will be able to defend their title once again against the team from the SEC. Last year it was Florida. This year in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, it'll be Miami and LSU December 30th, 7.30 Eastern Time. There will be an outstanding matchup. The question is, can LSU bounce back from the disappointing loss to Georgia? Toyota Gator Bowl pits Louisville against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, like LSU, falling in a conference championship game and missing its opportunity to play in a BCS game. Up and down season for the Michigan Wolverines at one point. Some question, these guys even get bowl eligible. Mm -hmm. Turned it on late in the season. Steve Breston started making plays not only in the return game, but as a receiver for Chad Henney. Wolverines fell short against Ohio State in their final regular season game, but still turned in a solid enough outing to send them to San Antonio and the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. I know it's not for sure. It's not a BCS game, but it certainly looks like one. Circa 1997, where the Michigan fans are still mad at Nebraska for getting a share of the national title. And for Nebraska, Frank, uh, uh, you look at Nebraska, what they've been able to do with Bill Callahan and this offense and changing it around. I think at the end of the season, they finally made great strides throwing the football, and this bowl game is going to be a huge test for them. And a clash of philosophy oh, in the AT&T yeah. Cotton Bowl. Texas Tech, Mike Leach, a high-powered offense with Cody Hodges. Alabama with one of the top defenses in the country. They'll do battle in Dallas. Alabama going to the Cotton Bowl for the first time in 21 years. Texas Tech has not been a frequent visitor either. It's been more than a decade since the Red Raiders have gone there as well. Now, Lou, 
Capital One Bowl, Wisconsin and Auburn. Barry Alvarez might want to give those reins to <laughs> Brett Bielema a game early. You know, I talked to Barry after his disappointing loss to Penn State, and uh, he said, well, I hope we can finish strong. I'd love to go to the Capital One Bowl in Orlando. He said, it'd be a great way to finish my career. And I thought, boy, that's wonderful. I have a home in Orlando. After he watches <laughs> his offer and failed me, he's going to say, I'm not sure I want to go there. I think I look at the Outback Bowl and go back to that game and what a big bowl game this is for Urban Meyer. This is his last chance for a big impression to leave recruits with a good taste in their mouth with a victory hopefully for Florida. And not only that, they're still recruiting hard trying to get some of the players that he can install in his spread offense in Florida because they're still not running the offense he wants, but he still has Chris Leak coming back next year. Chris Leak's freshman year, they played Iowa in the same bowl game, lost by 20 points. And, you know, Chris Leak, considered Iowa in the recruiting process. He gets another look at Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes and those great linebackers, Greenway and Hodge for Iowa. That ought to be a good one in the Outback Bowl. Holiday Bowl, always, always one that's high power with a lot of energy. And for the second straight year, a Pac-10 team finishes in the top five of the BCS, but because of the rules, Oregon left out because Ohio State and Notre Dame got in automatically, as Cal did last year. The Ducks will go to the Holiday Bowl, Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, to take on a quickly improving Oklahoma team and the head ball coach taking South Carolina against Missouri. And that's December 30th, 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN. USC coming off a colossal belly flop against the Trojans in the regular season finale yesterday, but they still have Maurice Drew to take them back to the drawing board. After the loss to USC and Bruins, high-powered offense, always attractive during the bowl season, and we might, we might have some people in El Paso who need to change the lights in the scoreboard, Northwestern and UCLA. And Brett Bazinet coming off a terrific season, 19 touchdowns, only six interceptions. This should be a high-scoring affair and a fun game to watch. And Northwestern trying to end that winless streak in bowls. We've only been to four, but haven't won one in over half a century since Ooh. 1948. Clemson took a bit of a tumble in the selection process. The Tigers will take on Colorado or what's left of them after Texas took them apart yesterday. That'll be December 27th, 5 Eastern on ESPN. Back to L.A. now and Chris Fowler. All right, Reese, thanks. We're going to turn these guys loose on the 24 non-BCS games, and a game that grabs your eye. For me, everybody tells me these are rewards for players. They're entertainment for fans. So I like offense in bowl games, up and down the field. I don't want to see great defense. Give me a game that's got a lot of points. Awards, entertainment for players. My pick is the Sun Bowl. Why? Because I played there years ago, <laughs> and it's right across the bridge to Juarez. Oh. That's another story. Now, Northwestern <laughs> averages 31 points a game, UCLA 38. This could be the highest-scoring bowl game of all. Man, this is a great bowl. It's close to Juarez. Is it one of those pack the sandwich kind of games? No, yeah. It is because of the points. I, I think the game that is standing out to me is the Holiday Bowl. Oklahoma and Oregon. You have Oregon, a team that to try to get into the BCS, and you have Oklahoma on the other side. At one point, they were two and three. Look at the way they finished to get to seven and four, and look at the Texas Tech game that could have gone their way. The difference has been Adrian Peterson in the last four games, averaging 154 yards a game, and they're playing better on defense. The story of that game will be the injury to Kellen Clements. Can the Oregon mm. quarterbacks and their talented group of receivers try to exploit that Oklahoma secondary? That'll be a good game. Well, Rez, that was you yeah. and Burt Reynolds. He was real Sunball, serious, right? wasn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, well, you, yeah. <laughs> I like the Texas Tech Alabama matchup the guys were talking about. Only twice has Alabama allowed more than 200 yards passing. That's what the Red Raiders do. And a lot of teams think they can stop that attack. Cal did last year yeah, we'll in the Holiday Bowl, got blown out. So an interesting Good matchup. Stuff. Reese, it is 68, and now they're all snowy here in Los Angeles as we head back to <laughs> Connecticut. Hey, what a coincidence, Chris. It's about 65 and not at all snowy here in the studio either. Plenty of <laughs> points put by Notre Dame all season long. The Fighting Irish needed every one of them to escape against Stanford and make their way into the BCS, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. And they did it largely on the power of that Charlie Weiss offense. Look at the way this veteran offensive line has come together. And Brady Quint, Jeff Samarja, Maurice Stovall have been able to produce. Scored 31 or more in 10 of the 11 games this season, averaging over 38 per nine and putting up huge numbers in touchdown passes. Charlie Weiss joining us now, the head coach of the Fighting Irish. So Charlie, two giants of the game, Notre Dame, Ohio State. They've only played four times. What does it mean to you to have this matchup? Well, I think it's great for the Midwest <laughs> to have uh, such a natural, natural game. You know, a, a Big Ten co-champ versus you know, the independent of the Midwest. And I think it's, it's going to be a very exciting matchup between two physical football teams. Now, you know, you can put a line on your resume that Rockney and Leahy and Parsegan and Holtz don't have on there by beating Ohio State. Irish haven't beaten them since 1936. 
Yeah, I also can put on my resume that I lost my two first games at home, too. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just a matter of which way you want to look at it. Now, you have less time to prepare for Super Bowls than you'll have to prepare for this game. And, and people always say, give Charlie Wise time, and he's going to cut a defense up. What can you realistically do with a month off that you couldn't do if you just, say, had an open date before playing Ohio State? Well, I mean, first of all, you can watch every game, and that, that helps when you can watch every play of every game and try to get a feel for you know their play callers both on offense and defense and try to not just do X's and O's and schemes but try to get a feel for what they do because uh, I've been groomed under you know coach Parcells and coach Belichick how you're supposed to attack weaknesses and sometimes in a three or four game breakdown you really don't get a feel for it but usually when you're watching 11 games you pretty good, get a pretty good idea of what they like to do. Now this is a highly touted defense from what you know of them at this point and I realize it's early. What is there? Is there a weakness on this Ohio State defense? Well that's the problem you know they don't have a major flaw and I think that you know you're gonna have to do a lot of research to try to kind of pick your spots because you can't in a game like this especially in a game of this magnitude against two great football teams think that you have all the answers. You don't, can't necessarily just figure you're going to out scheme everyone. So you got to do a lot of research, you got to do a lot of study, and then just get your, get your players in position to let them go out there and play without having to think about what they have to do. Charlie, congratulations on a great season and best of luck in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Thank you very much. Maybe a fair thing to say, a key in this game might be how quickly the Ohio State defense adjusts to what Charlie Weiss throws at them in the early part of the game. Fair enough? Yeah, that's fair enough, but it could be how quickly the offense adjusts to A.J. Hawk in that defense. <laughs> you know, quarterbacks have a tough time adjusting to A.J. Hawk and Carpenter and mm -hmm. those guys in the backfield, which makes it very difficult. That's one we're looking forward to. Others, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, Fresno State and Tulsa, these two teams have seen each other over the years in the WAC. And Fresno's had the better of them, 4-0 in WAC games from 99 to 02. And Tulsa's got an exciting player to keep an eye on, Garrett Mills. Garrett Mills, Mills the, the number one receiver is tight ends in the country as far as receptions go. He's an outstanding player. Can Pat Hill defend him? And how about TCU? How close was TCU to becoming oh. this year's Utah, making it into the BCS? As it is, they'll be in the EV1.net Houston Bowl. Yes, Dan McCarney and Iowa State, TCU losing only to SMU this year. The Pure Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl, BYU and Cal. And what about the Insight Bowl, Arizona State against the State University of New Jersey? Greg Schiano turned this program around. We thought he could get the six wins this year, and he got seven wins. What a great job of coaching at Rutgers. Should have talked about him for Coach of the Year, maybe, Lou. Oh, well, there were a lot of candidates, but that'll be a great football game. I really believe that. And speaking of Coach of the Year candidates, guys who are going for championships and records, Joe Paterno will visit with us in a while, as will the head ball coach from South Carolina. He's got the Gamecocks bowling this time around. Later on Sports Center, first place on the line as the Bengals battle the Steelers and the Cowboys collide with the Giants. Plus, we'll tell you who's headed to the Fiesta, Sugar, and Orange Bowl. Sports Center, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be paying less. I'm State Farm Agent Demetrius Simon. and Had to rebuild. Instead, behind Kenny Irons, he's reloading going into the Capital One Bowl against Wisconsin May Day. And not only that, their offensive coordinator, Al Borges, has done a fantastic job with this Gulf Coast offense. But Kenny Irons has really led this football team. He leads the conference in rushing at 109 and a half yards per game. But not only that, you've got a big, huge physical offensive line that knocks you off the ball. And Marcus McNeil, six foot nine, 336 pounds, going to be a great one at the next level. But Kenny Irons, the first year starter for Auburn, what he's been able to do with the football, getting it into the end zone the 13 rushing touchdown I think that's been huge and you look at their rushing attack and their offense from last year compared to this year they're better this year and that's without three that's right three first round draft picks chasing <laughs> oh, no, just an Cadillac offense. wins that's just in the backfield yeah. and you look at Ronnie Brown he's out of this backfield but I think it's a tribute to not only Tommy Tupperville but especially Al Borges. because that name needs to get out there he should be up for some head job positions yeah, Texas Tech is a team that also year in and year out, no matter who they have to replace, they put up prolific offensive numbers. Red Raiders are going to take on Alabama in the Cotton Bowl. Alabama coming in after having lost its last two in, in the hunt for a conference championship through the first nine games. Louis, this is a, a clash of philosophy. Oh, it really is, as uh, was mentioned previously. But 
I think what's going to be critical in this football game is how much Alabama improves on offense. When you look at them, they were not very prolific at the end of the year. Predominantly, they had a young offensive line, and they didn't have much more other than Brady Croy and Darby at running back. But their defense is outstanding. They're secondary. They've not given up more than 200 yards pass in any single football game. And when you look at Texas Tech, last year they annihilated California. They're going to come in. They're going to complete some passes. But the key is, can Alabama move the ball? Yeah, Alabama, unlike Cal, excited about going to the Cotton Bowl. Cal was sort of dragging when they came in a year ago. Ought to be a great matchup between that offense and the Crimson Tide defense. Another team from the SEC going bowling, South Carolina going to the Independence Bowl to take on Missouri. Steve Spurrier joining us now. And Steve, a terrific season for you to get your team bowl eligible again. You are able to end that hex against Tennessee for the Gamecocks, although I'm not sure you ever have one of those hexes against Tennessee going. Yeah. But what do you think of your, of your bowl slide? It was talked that maybe you'd wind up in the peach or the outback? Oh, Reese, I tell you what, we're very excited to be going to the Independence Bowl. I think if anyone has a right to complain, it'd have to be LSU. I think there's three teams they beat that are playing in January bowl games. But anyway, we're excited to be going to Shreveport, and we're excited about the year we had. It seemed like it was only two months ago that we were two and three, and Kentucky had a 16 to 10 in the middle of the third quarter. <laughs> so we came a long way from that point. And we're just excited, really excited for our players. Most all of them would be their first bowl trip. And uh, should be fun. Hopefully we'll play our best game. Now you found a way to move the ball effectively at times, but the offensive numbers weren't prolific. What did it mean to you as a head coach to just find ways to win games? Well, that's what we had to do to try to win games. Uh, defensively, we sort of couldn't get the other guy off the field, but we, we kept him from scoring touchdowns. And so we had to try to win some low scoring or mid teen type games. And uh, fortunately, we won five in a row conference games. Uh, didn't hold up the last game against Clemson, but really proud of the way our players played this year. The guy on offense that did make a lot of big plays for you was Sidney Rice. How do you compare him to some of the great receivers you had at Florida? Uh, Sidney's a little different. He's one of the tallest receivers I've ever coached, uh, right around 6'4". Uh, just got excellent hands. Usually anything he touches, he catches. So uh, he's got a he's got a big time future, and uh, you know hopefully we can keep him healthy. He's only a freshman, and uh, hopefully we can add another solid recruiting class this year and have a, have another competitive team next year. All right, Lou says you're welcome for Sidney Rice. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad Lou uh, redshirted him. You know he got hurt got hurt in warmups last year, and I think uh, Coach could have used him probably the last four or five games of the year. So I appreciate you keeping him out, Coach. <laughs> if he'll stay the full uh, five years, I'll, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Steve, best of luck in the Independence Bowl. All Thanks right, for thank being with us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Steve Spurrier, the head coach at South Carolina. Gamecocks having a solid season and going on to take on Missouri and try to finish on a winning note. After really their defense turned around, Tyrone Nix did a great job for them as one of the defensive coordinators. There is the ADT National Championship trophy. Either the Longhorns or the Trojans will add that to their collection. And it'll be CS both. It's obvious. They can play. They got great speed. Wisconsin struggle lately and offensively, but they do av have averaged 36 points a game. This is one of my favorites because it's played in beautiful downtown Orlando. What a great place that is for the players to go and visit. You should go there sometimes. Yeah. It's beautiful. Palm trees, a nice place to live, too. <laughs> You're finally coming around on Auburn. And yes. Tommy oh, Tuberville yeah. okay. realizing that it's a pretty good football game. <laughs> and Orlando, of course. You've always loved that. This is going to be the ugliest football game, I think, of all the bowl games because whoever had the unfortunate task of lining up against Auburn is going to be in for some misery. Auburn right now is playing as well as anybody in the country, and they are the best team not to be in the BCS. Their offense led the SEC in scoring offense, led the SEC in total offense. You have a Wisconsin team that down the road in the Big Ten against Penn State and Iowa couldn't do anything on offense. This is going to be one of those typical games you turn on on New Year's Day, where it's the speed of the SEC against the big, strong guys from the Big Ten, and the speed of the SEC takes advantage of that. Yeah, Barry Alvarez hates to hear about contending with SEC speed, but it's a storyline yeah, every true. time they play yep. one right. of those teams. Compelling matchup in the Peach Bowl, but I think it comes down to not just two great defenses, Miami and LSU, but also morale. There's yep. been some talk among the Canes. They wanted to go to the Gator Bowl, maybe take on Louisville and rematch that classic game in the Orange Bowl a year ago. They get an LSU team that, frankly, has to go back to Atlanta after being swamped for the dogs in the SEC championship game. So. Who's going to be more up for this Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl? Well, first of all, I think I am. And the oh. reason is, remember, oh, right, this is it. Oh, remember, Chick-fil-A did uh, not invent the uh, chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And this one here is going to be a defensive struggle. But I think psychologically, LSU's got to be down when he walk into that place and remember <clears> what happened to Georgia. But Miami, they'll play. They won last year. Last year there.
We just wind you up for this selection that's show. That's my favorite you know, show when it comes, I get all the commercials in. Yeah, you do. I, you know, th I think that's probably the most intriguing matchup of all the, the bowl games that are outside of the yeah. BCS. Another game that I think is, is pretty intriguing is Iowa going up against Florida. We just talked about Wisconsin playing Auburn and the speed of the SEC. I think the shoe may be on the other foot. I think Iowa has a chance to com 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 uh, compete with uh, Florida and represent the Big Ten, and it's w the way they finished the year. This is a team that really struggled. At one point, they were 5-4. and four. Mm -hmm. After all the preseason expectations, the difference was Albert Young was running the football and Drew Tate was playing better. They played better defense. I like Iowa in that game against Florida. It matches up well for the Hawkeyes. Mm -hmm. You can have uh, Michigan, Nebraska. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. You like the Big Ten's chances in the bowl season. In that game. Right? In but that but game. overall. Nah, I won't have to size them up. <laughs> Get, we got four weeks. Three weeks. I understand. Yeah. All right, respect to you. All right, Chris, uh, Big 12 and the Pac-10 in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. And earlier we talked a little bit about Oregon's quarterback situation with Kellen Clemens suffering a broken leg. Dennis Dixon, Brady Leaf, they've kind of gone back and forth and given Bilotti enough offense. Oklahoma's really been coming around because, because their stud horse running back's healthier now. Yeah, and they've got to keep him healthy, and that's Adrian Peterson for Bob Stoops. As long as you can keep him healthy, things are going to go well for your football team. At 7-4 and four this year, they did make some improvement off the season. They didn't start off the way they wanted to with the early loss to TCU, but when you have a healthy Adrian Peterson, this is what he gives you. He still averaged over 100 yards per game this year, but he's just nasty when he gets the football. He will not be denied. The first tackler will not bring him down, and he has the speed to take it to the house. But if you look at this Oklahoma team, Bob Stoops took his lump this year. He had Rhett Bomar at quarterback, a young quarterback. They had 28 freshmen or sophomores on the two deep. Look for this team to be much better next year and down the road. Oh, I agree with you. But, you know, you can tell a lot about your football team in a bowl game. I remember it was 1987. We went to the first bowl game Notre Dame been to in a while, at least on January 1. We played pretty well, but we got beat by Texas A&M. I felt devastated. We're in the locker room. Nobody's upset except one young man. One young man sitting there, he's crying his heart out. His name was Chris Norwich, and he didn't even play in the football game. And I said to myself and the staff, there's one thing about next year. We're going to put Chris Norwich on the field. We'll find a place for him. We're going to associate people that feel the same way about Notre Dame, about playing as he did. 1988, we won the national championship. It was because of the way our players responded to that loss that set the tempo for the next year. Might be an opportunity for Oklahoma, too. As you mentioned, the number of young kids that they're playing, only a handful of teams in the country, about five teams, mm -hmm. played as many freshmen and redshirt freshmen in the two deep and got them on the field at some point during the season as Oklahoma did. And the Sooners, very young, sort of biding their time, seeing how they do for next year. Joe Paterno just missed finishing off an undefeated regular season. We'll talk to the Nittany Lions head coach in a bit. And Fisher Price introduced the ESPN Shot Block Basketball. Nothing but nylon. It's the only basketball game with built in defense featuring the voice of ESPN's own Dick Vitale. Wow, what a nice <laughs> shot! With electronic scoring and real crowd noise. Shoot. The ESPN Shot Block nice Basketball shot. gives you eight different ways to play, from rookie to pro. What a performance like that! You might be on Sports Center. Take it to the hole with the ESPN Shot Block Basketball. In stores now, batteries not included. And Joe rolls to his right. Takes a man out of his shoes. Want a chance to be the Pontiac game correspondent at the national championship game for Jimmy Kimmel Live? To the 10, to the 5, touchdown Longhorn. That is your Pontiac game changing performance. Then do what this fan did. Record your best call of a game changing performance at Pontiac.com slash NCAA. Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. Let's go, baby. NFL 2006, as real as it gets. Rated everyone, EA Sports. It's in the game. Hello, I'm home. Hey, honey, have you seen the credit card bill? I may have thrown it away. My disco pants. Why? Where is it? Where is it? I'm not paying the late fee. Sometimes you can't help paying late. <laughs> Avoid late fees with the new City Simplicity card. No late fees when you make a purchase each billing period. City, live richly. Happy holidays, Miss Earl. Angie, thank you. I have something for you, too. Be a dear and take this to the post office. Happy holidays, Doug. You're a lifesaver. 
Yo, NJ. Holiday packages to send. Thank you. Go to USPS.com. Pay postage, print labels, and ask for a pickup. Free carrier pickup only from the U.S. Postal Service. Hey, Angie, you got any more cookies? On DVD Tuesday, experience the motion picture event critics are calling Ron Howard's best movie. This time around, I know what I'm fighting for. Russell Crowe, Renee Zellweger. Pop, pop, bam! Cinderella Man. On DVD this Tuesday. One more play. That's all Michael Robinson and Penn State wanted in the big house against Michigan on October 15th. But when Chad Henney finds Mario Manningham, that play, you know, final play of the game, is all that separates the Nittany Lions from perfection. It did not, however, stop Penn State from winning the Big Ten and getting the automatic berth into the BCS. And joining us now is the Nittany Lions head coach, Joe Paterno. Joe, on that play against Michigan, they got two seconds put back on the clock. How much have you thought about those two seconds since you finished the rest of the season? Well, you know, you can you can sit around and, and, and talk about what if and, and can't do anything about it. We, we had to get on with the season and go out and try to be as good a football team as we could be. And uh, if I could do something about it, I would have done something about it. I try to put it out of my mind and just think about uh, let, let's let's get as good as we can be. And, and I think this football team responded that way. We have a good football team. Uh, how good we'll find out because obviously uh, when you when you play a Florida State team coached by Bobby Bowden you're gonna you're gonna play against a team that, that's gonna be ready in a bowl game the last time we played uh, Florida State we played in a bowl game they beat us Buckley ran a uh, punt back against us to beat us so I, I think we got to look at the you know, we, we got to look at the positive side of it. You, if you start looking at the negative side of it, you eat yourself up. Well, what was your first reaction when you found out you were going to be squaring off with Bobby Bowden in a bowl game? Well, my first reaction was that I, I, don't, I really don't want it to be a Bobby Bowden-Joe Paterno uh, game because I don't think that's fair to the squads. I think, I think Bobby's team came back with that freshman quarterback and what have you after they had lost three in a row and, and beat an awfully good Virginia Tech team, a very, very fine Virginia Tech team, and did it decisively, and uh, I don't want to get into that. I, I really don't. I hope we can. We I hope we can have the two teams, uh, you know, the, the, the focus be on be on them. I don't want to be it the other way. And I, as I've said many times, Bobby can't run, and I can't run either. So, I mean, but, I'm, but I think I'm faster than he is. How do you compare this matchup with some of your great bowl game matchups against Bear Bryant? Well, you know, I, it's, I haven't really had an opportunity to really think about the game yet. So it's, I, I, anything I say, I say might not be really accurate. You know, we had some epic games against them, uh, particularly the 78 game when uh, we were one and two. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a great game. I, I really do. I think uh, Florida State obviously is going to come off their big win over over uh, Virginia Tech and they're going to come out of that with and, and we've got some momentum and I think there's going to be a lot of uh, obviously it's, it's going to be a high profile game. Well Joe congratulations on a great season thanks for being with us. Hey good and you guys you know just make sure Lou Holtz behaves will you? <laughs> that, that's a tough order I, I don't know I need a disciplinarian well, in here you, to take well, care well, of that. You, you, you ask me how this game's going to shape up you got bigger problems than I got. <laughs> <laughs> that is true Joe thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> you know, only six wins separate Joe from Bobby Bowden on the race to finish all time number one in wins in 1A. Okay, 40 yard dash. Who wins, Joe or Bobby? Uh, you know, I you know what? Bobby only wins that thing if he gets Ernie Sims to tackle Joe at the beginning because I've seen Joe chase officials the last couple of years. Good acceleration rules, shake coming right out of the break. He's got a burst. He's got a little bit of a burst. It's going to be a great one in the FedEx Orange Bowl. You know, this is history. This is a moment that, that you might not see again. Two coaching legends and icons, number one, number two on the all-time wins list, going at it. And Paterno even has an opportunity to uh, get to within five, Lou. It's a, it's a great, uh, compelling, historic matchup. Oh, it really is. Not only that, because they're very, very well coached. And they're also very, very competitive. Make no mistake about it. They can say it's, say it's about the third, but I want to promise you, they, they become one and two because they have a lot of pride the way they do, and they're very talented. All right. So how long will one of them go in before the other one does? Oh, I, first, I, right? I'll tell you this <laughs> right now. <laughs> Nobody go retire as long as they're second. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> Back to Chris Fowler now in L.A., Chris.
All right, Reese, thank you for talking about those uh, two attractive games in Tempe and Miami. First, uh, the FedEx Orange Bowl. I don't know if the, the press conferences down there are going to quite be as entertaining as Baden and Paterno. I mean, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Tempe is so compelling in so many ways, but not perhaps for the Trestle Weiss yucks at the press conference. But as we talked about earlier, you Brady Quinn, Columbus native, taking on Ohio State there. And that defense, it's number one against the run. So you have to wonder if Charlie Weiss is just going to set the running game aside, maybe an occasional running play, but let Mr. Quinn throw it 50 times against the Buckeyes there. Ohio State has a clear edge when you stack these teams up on defense compared to the Irish. I think this is the best and smartest business move of all the bowl games. In fact, besides Texas and USC, this will be the by far the most watched game because it's got two of the most popular teams in football in Notre Dame against Ohio State. And Notre Dame's got a quarterback named Brady Quinn <laughs> that can throw the football. He throws it and throws it and throws it, and he will keep on throwing it against the Buckeyes. He's thrown for 32 touchdowns this year with only seven interceptions, and he's got Charlie Weiss calling a base. Brady Quinn throwing the ball, occasional draw, a lot of screens, and it'll be all over Ohio State. No, Ohio State has got one of the best defenses in all of football. In fact, they're fourth in the nation in total defense. They're number one in the nation against the rush. So I think this is going to be the most popular game besides Texas and USC of all the bowl games. This is the one I want to watch because this is going to be sensational. I think it is going to be. Oh, and I think what's, what's interesting is Ohio State now has been to the Fiesta Bowl three of the last four years. Wow. John Junker, the executive director, must have looked at the matchup, Ohio State and Notre Dame, and realized that, hey, this is still, fans in Columbus in the, in the state of Ohio are still going to come out because it is Notre Dame. Everybody's going to be talking about Brady Quinn against the Ohio State defense. I think the advantage, if there is an advantage, is on the other side of the ball. It's Ohio State's offense going up against the Notre Dame defense. This Notre Dame defense has struggled most of the year in defending the pass. They've allowed six 300-yard passers this year, and right now Troy Smith is playing about as well as any quarterback in running that spread offense because he's got a runner and Antonio Pittman. It's a very balanced attack. If you're Charlie Weiss, it's going to be another one of those games where you try to come in and you have ball control and keep the ball away from Troy Smith. That'll be the only way Notre Dame stops Ohio State's offense is to keep them on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fourth game for the Irish against the Big Ten team. They are two and one. You'll be down there with Mike Tirico calling the uh, FedEx Orange Bowl. The guys touched on the coaching matchup. Interesting, you know, Florida State presumed dead yeah. 24 hours ago, made a strong statement. Weatherford has his confidence back. Two very good defenses in well, this game. First thing, remember, Florida State's down, but they've won three of the last five ACC titles. Hey, they're not that down. They can play defense. Questionable offense. They only scored two touchdowns against Tech. And let me tell you something. Penn State has a quarterback, Michael Robinson, who I think is the most valuable player in the Big Ten. He He'll give, he'll give him some trouble throwing and running the football. He's a good player. Well, it was great to see the, the, the swagger from yeah, Florida yeah. State back last night and the attitude. you got to believe in playing in the Orange Bowl against Joe Paterno and Michael Robinson, you're going to see that same mentality. It's going to take that for Florida State to win this game. The defensive speed that they were able to put on the display last night will be the key because this Penn State team is the best team outside of the Rose Bowl going into the bowl games. It's not just Michael Robinson. It's a great defense as well. That'll be a fun matchup. And they'll look forward to disproving some of the skeptics. I think there's still some skeptics around the country who don't believe Penn State yeah, belongs we'll at see. number three, don't believe that they're the best team outside of the Rose Bowl. No, yep. but there, there's plenty yeah, of skeptics yep. in the first meeting in 15 years between Jopa and Bobby, of course. Coming up from L.A. in this portion of the show, visit from Matt Leinert, the big win yesterday, and he was excellent boyfriend today as he cheered on the woman of yeah. Troy and his girlfriend who plays for the basketball team. That's coming up from L.A. Back to you guys. All right, Chris, look forward to it. A couple of other bowl matchups, the Motor City Bowl and the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Memphis and Akron in the Motor City Bowl on December 26th, 4 o'clock Eastern time. A chance to see D'Angelo Williams, Akron going back to their side of the great last second win in the MAC championship game. And UCF, George O'Leary's team, winless last year, bowl eligible, finished behind Tulsa in the Conference USA championship game. They'll take on Nevada in the Sheraton Hawaii. Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Just fine. If you play for USC, we'll talk more about the Rose Bowl coming up. It's time to discover Lunesta, a sleep aid that can give you and your restless mind the sleep you need. Lunesta helps most people sleep all through the night and works quickly, so take it right before bed. Lunesta is non-narcotic and approved for long-term use.
Of course, do not use sleep medicines for extended periods without first talking to your doctor. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active. Until you know how you'll react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Avoid taking Lunesta with alcohol. Most sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. Ready to catch a great night's sleep? Just climb into bed and leave the rest to Lunesta. Tired of missing big sporting events? Wonder how people get tickets to sold out concerts? Looking to build memories of a lifetime? Razor Gator is your connection to hard to get tickets to any event on the planet. Go ahead, live on the edge of your seat. Go to razorgator.com or call 1 800 542 4466 to get the edge on your seat. R A Z O R G A T O R, Razor Gator. Your connection to hard to get tickets. Welcome back to College Game Day Bowl Selection Special, presented by Outback Steakhouse. Rose Bowl that has been anticipated all season long. USC in Texas on January 4th for the national title. SC comes in on a 34 game winning streak going for an unprecedented in the major poll era. Three straight national championships. Joining us now the head coach of the Trojans Pete Carroll. Pete last night on college game day final Lou Holtz said nobody understands how difficult it is to keep a team on top for this long. What's it been like for you? Well, it's been a great challenge, and, and you know, I think any coach hopes to be in a situation where you try to manage your way through this. Uh, it, it's been, uh, it hasn't been as hard as people would think, uh, because once we found our way of doing things, we've just stuck with it. So it's been the discipline and the, and the strength of your belief in what you're doing that, that's made this uh, made this possible. And then obviously, the, you know, the coaches have just followed uh, followed along. When new guys have come in and taken over and, and, and made this uh, this continuity work for us. And uh, it's it's really really been a good time. Been a lot of fun. Now, Texas has been in big games before, but you guys have been on this stage for the second straight year and playing a game with national championship implications for the third straight year. How does that experience help you? Well, there's no question that it does. We're, we're very comfortable in the situation that we're in. I think it's really one of the keys to being able to find the consistency is, is not being knocked up and down in, in any which way by the hype and the buildup and the matchups and all of that. Uh, we, we've found a, a way of, you know, of dealing with the, all of that in, in a manner that allows us to practice really well, stay really focused on what we can control and what we're dealing with, and, and then uh, and taking our best preparation to the game. And it, it's, it's been critical for us to be able to do that but we feel very comfortable. It's very normal for our guys to be in this kind of setting, and I, I think that's made a, a major difference. During the middle part of the season, Matt Leinert made some comments that he felt as if he were playing with the weight of the world on his shoulders. When did you notice Matt seemed like he was having fun again? Well, it, it we started uh, once we we both you know I could feel it with him you know I I could sense he was having a problem and I I could feel it kind of weighing on me a little bit too so we sat down and, and started talking about it and and uh, within a couple of days he said something to the team in a team meeting and, and told him he wasn't playing as well as he should be playing he wasn't having as much fun and he'd been pushing and pressing too much and from that point on uh, you know at practice he just he just changed his, his perspective some and everything kind of lit up and, and lightened up and and we haven't been the same sense. Pete, congratulations. Best of luck in Pasadena. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Mac Brown's had a pretty good run of his own, not quite 34 in a row, but Texas has won 19 straight games headed into the national championship game. And the Texas head coach joined John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor on ABC's Bull Show. Pete and his group have won 34 straight games. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about Reggie, and it's not just about Matt. He's done a tremendous job of coaching. Everybody's knocked their defense. You're in great shape with your defense when you've won 34 straight, guys. They're kicking games good. They totally dominated a rival with a tremendous amount of pressure on them yesterday. So there are no weaknesses when you've won 34 straight, and they've already played in this game three straight year, or two straight years with this pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at the Rose Bowl last year. That should help us some, uh, but we've got to also be able to play our game and handle the build up because it'll be different than what we're used to. Well, Texas certainly proved worthy against a far inferior opponent in Colorado yesterday, but with things that's not inferior about the Longhorns when they match up with anybody, Mark, 
on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, on both sides of the ball. They're very big, very physical, very talented, and extremely smart, particularly 